Frankel from somebody, but Frankel's unbeaten record is intact. Two quality horses are made to look mere mortals as Frankel remains unbeaten and wins the QE2. Five races, five explosive wins. The 2011 flat season was dominated by Frankel. The son of Galileo ended the year as the highest rated horse in the world and stays in training at four with the promise of yet more big race success. He's wintered well, I'm pleased with him. He's growing up a bit mentally and uh, looks strong and, and quite settled. So um, keep your fingers crossed, hope he can continue to do well. And the plan is to uh, take him for a race course gallop at Newbury? Well, I think so, because I mean, his first race I mean, will rather be a mile, and the first opportunity is really Lockinch. And he's, he's quite precocious and everything, and he wants to get on with things. So, I mean, I've, I've had to do a certain amount of work with him and to take him down there and stay the night and give him a race course gallop. It's like an easy race, you know. It gives me an excuse, so it breaks, breaks the, the, you know, the syllabus thing. Um, up a bit, so I, I got an excuse to get him back and say, you know, you've been away, you've had an easy race, and now you, know, you can have an easy week to, to get him to his first race, you know, rather than have to keep keep plugging on. You know. He is growing up and he's and he's settling settling pretty well. He's got a lot of energy. He's quite a hyper horse, but <clears throat> he needs a certain amount of work, otherwise he is a bit fresh. But uh, he showed by a Royal Ascot time, although the race didn't go right, uh, he showed that basically he's settling very well and he settled very well at. Goodwood, and he settled very well at uh, Ask at the end of the year. So I, mean, I, I think that's that, the problem. Hopefully, is out of the way. And um, so many horses, you know, they can have no brain and pull like anything, and and then you know they never they fall in the heat. But he has he's quite intelligent, and I think he's he, he's learning the whole time, and things at the moment are going the right way. And will you continue to use Bullet Train as a pacemaker? Well, I got I got an option really. I, you know, I mean, the, t the two horses, the bullet train, and there's another one, which, just if I need, need. But I mean, he's setting well now, I may not need one, but I mean, I have got another horse, uh, if need be. And beyond the lock-in, what's the plan? I mean, the thing is that he'll tell us, you know, you know I, I'm quite confident he probably will get a mile and a quarter, but he's setting so well. When I go a mile and a quarter is another matter, whether we go ask at time or we leave it to later. We'll see. But I, I, I wouldn't be surprised if we don't see him a mile and a quarter. You never know, you might see him a mile and a half. At this stage, though, if you sort of were nominating his end of year target, it would probably be the champion stakes at Ascot, would it? At the end of the year? Mm -hmm. um, well, it could be. I mean, at the moment, you know, you would think that would suit him more than America, really. I mean, at the moment, you'd think so. I mean, I mean time will tell. Is it a horse you wouldn't be particularly keen on taking abroad? Uh, it's, it's a very difficult one to leave, leave it completely open. But uh, I mean, at the moment, you know, it's a long way ahead. A, long, you know, a lot of water is going to flow under the bridge. At the moment, I would think it's more likely you'd go to Ascot than America. But I mean, time will tell. And the Prince, you know, the Prince, in the end, will make, make the final decision. You know, whenever we were chatting, Teddy and myself and tell him what we think and it's his horse and he'll make the final decision. And of course this is a very exciting time of year, lots of sort of three-year-old classic contenders coming through. Any names you're sort of particularly excited about this year? Any names? Well I, th I think there are quite a few three-year-olds that, in my two-year-olds last year were very back, but they didn't help me very much as two-year-olds. There are quite a few that could make into nice horses, but I mean, I, I, think, I think you should just watch them. I mean, I think the first time out you're going to have to careful because I mean we have no grass you know no rain they've only been on the all weather and you'd like to let them down two or three times on the grass before they run first time out you know? so that a lot of them may just need a race but I think if you just watch them carefully I'm probably um, your decision will probably or your, when you made your mind up you like them or not it's probably better than mine I mean Noble Mission's one that's going to get a, a lot well, of attention I mean, last year he had sore shins and you know he's off about six, seven weeks, and then he, he was short of work, and then the only race I had he could possibly run in was at Yarmouth, and it was very, very heavy ground, and he got beaten by horse, a fit, very fit horse, I think a lot of good orphans. Uh, he was going very easy, just got a little bit tired in the last half furlong. Um, I think he's improved quite a lot, 
and, and he's, he'll be in the main races and, and, and time will tell. I mean, maybe he might come out at a new market or Newbury and then we'll go from there. And then you can decide whether he's worth, worth being 100, 200 to 1 for the Derby or not. Also staying in training this season is seven-year-old Twice Over, the winner of four Group 1 races, including last year's Judmont International. You know, all going well, he might make his sort of debut at Newmarket Craven Week because he's very well himself, part of the family, loves racing and, 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 and seems to be going as well as ever. So, And what prompted the decision to, to keep him in training? Well, I think, I think the Prince had one or two offers for him. They weren't very big, but and, he's, and he asked me what I... Thought I said, well, you know, at, at a price, I suppose you, you know, you should let him go. But you know, he's, you know, he's a part of the family. He's my best friend. You know, he's been with me quite, quite a long time now. And um, when he goes, there'll be a tear in my eye. And um, he said um, to, to Teddy, uh, twice over remains in training next year. And any particular t targets for him? Just feel away. You know, you've got a, you've got the other horse to think about as well, you? and you've got world domination too. You know, so. They'll all, hopefully, find races in France and Ireland, Europe and England. And Would you avoid Ascot with him now? I don't know. I mean, it depends what, where, um, what happens by then. You know, whether Frank was going there or Frank goes to Marl or, you know, I mean, or there's, and there's world domination. I, I think they're, they're, as, as time goes on, they'll sort of sell that. I mean, often I've had, in the past, Three or four tiers. I thought, God, they, they would be racing post or you know, horses, yeah? Group one horse at the end of the year. God, do I have to run the four? By the time do you get the ra racing post, there's only one, one worth running, or yeah. things happen to some of the others. Or, so it, it, it sorts itself out, and I'll tell you. And world domination, any, any plan for, for where well, he'll start off? Well, way. I mean, so, you know, he may come out of the Gerard if he's all right. I mean, if he's, he's going nice at the moment, but I mean, Every day is another day. Isn't it?